it's like simple as this where only the middle and the ring fingers are uh, flexed and they are not able to fully extend and or you can meet a, a patient like this where there's a scar in the forearm is skin grafted with all the uh, contractures and also the hand is totally uh, in insensate so when you in the present you will find that no case is another as one another uh, many a time i used to think we need to classify them as sugis class finer holden sign but then if you really think over as to how was these are going to help us to uh, treat him i think it's find it very difficult so what we have to do we just have to i, I always to just think like this what has all got affected so everything can get affected in workmans and i go like this as the skin got affected skin then i take the muscles i think what are all the muscles affected or the nerves affected and as it got a uh, pulse in the uh, hand and how is the bone so the treatment would depend upon assessing the problem in each component and addressing that component to the best of our ability if you think the um, uh, muscles are the most uh, vulnerable they are, in fact the muscle is the most vulnerable and the nerves these are two things which are vulnerable and they too always you no know, go in a sequence if it is very mild you will find you know the fdp of the middle and ring i think they are the most vulnerable in the hand so that is the reason i showed you a picture where the only the, you know, the two fingers are uh, flexed the four fingers are gone for contrast after fdp of the middle and ring then is the fpl and then is the index and little Uh, superficialis then pronator teres wrist flexors and then the extensors come and what you will find the mobile vad no extensor caparelis longus and these mobile vad they are the last we affected and even the worst affected no they'll be they might be acting a little bit and if we got the two nerves the median nerve is always you know, almost you know, more affected than the the dull nerve so when we face a case or whenever you find a problem now we can only have these four questions you know when do we operate and how do we take the decision as to what do we have, what operation are we going to do and the technical details during the procedure and what the what is the outcome you not know, that we could expect so when do we operate you know say suppose if someone comes with this this is part of acute compartment syndrome like it's just bordering on that if you have a skin with blisters the skin comes like this you find is compromised and people whenever you reach when they reach us after 48 hours you know we don't operate and if you operate what would happen is uh, you risk the run the risk of exposing the necrosis muscles and uh, yeah, the muscles which are not got any blood supply they all get infected they all get necrosis and you'll also lose the nerves i think that's the problem i think you'll also lose a long segment of the nerves you'll lose and in fact by if by opening a patient uh, forearm like this we uh, run the risk of you no know, losing more tissues i think so what you really like to have is just you know, treat it conservatively allow it to settle down and over a couple of months you know start doing things so when you see them later what really matters is you know do two factors matter so i look at two things one if you are going to operate so we are going to operate in the forearm how is the quality of the skin suppose if i make an incision here will it heal i think that's the question if it heals that means you can operate then the question comes now do we need to operate you need to operate it early if you feel there is a compromise in nerve function so you feel the skin is okay and then if the patient says you know there is not feeling the same way as the other hand that means you know you need to operate it early the reason being is not that no it's not is unlike a carpal tunnel see it's unlike a, a carpal tunnel because you not only lose a sensation in a particular area you have a total loss of the intrinsics because the nerve the block happens not here i think the block happens somewhere here so you lose you now total intrinsic loss that you'll have in the hand so the skin is okay and then you find the nerve is compromised that means you know you need to operate now early the cause of nerve injury or no or two one is that mechanical because fibrosing compressing in nerves see suppose you see them at about no one and a half months they will say kunja maramara irukke sir they'll be so like little bit they'll say and then if you see them after one more month na you will say that they is finding it no a little bit more i think it will be more so because the fibrosis that ensues now it keeps on compressing in nerves so one and secondly we need to realize that for the nerves to function well you need to have the gliding the nerve has to glide 
So you will find all places where the neurovascular bundle is there. They glide. Suppose you take the brachial plexus below the clavicle everywhere, they glide. Suppose if the gliding stops, that again your nerves will not function well. So that's the reason why you have to do neurolysis. The vascular part component is that now initially your uh, insult is that now that may be blood supply is co compromised regarding to everything. And secondly, when the dense fibrosis happens, again the vascularity um, uh, gets less. So even with complete ischemia, I think you know what you have is that we find that the sensory recovery can come. So you find the totally paralyzed hand. You think you ask me now, will you still decompress the nerves? Yes, we will because there is always a potential for sensory recovery, and it happens you know, even after a long period of time. So you will have to do this. And my motor also can recover. Sometimes they don't recover is because the muscles themselves can become fibrotic. Okay, that's a, that's the problem. And the motor fibers in the nerves, which goes to the nerves, you know, they do not regenerate. That's the, that's the second problem. So normally, when if you ask me, when is the time we intervene? We intervene about between two and three months. Till then, you know, we keep all the patients in physiotherapy with splints to prevent the deformities. I will do it earlier if the skin is fine. If you and then yeah, there is a nerve involvement, that means you now we may go a bit early. So I think it must make it clear as to when do we operate. So next question comes up now: What do we operate? I think what do we do? So you will find the most important thing is we have to do a neurolysis. We we'll always think of now in bulk medicine, we can't means and we think of muscles. But then the most important thing is the nerves are very important because muscles, you know, somehow we can get it, you no? Know? But the sensation you can get only through the nerves. I think that's very important. So if the patient has got a sensitivity deficit, we do a neurolysis and you exercise the fibrotic mass and many patients may get by the same photograph and I'm putting it over here. You see, that's the, that's the nerve. And you find, see, this is a severe fibrosis that has happened in this area. Here you find the thickness of the nerve is this, but whereas if you find the arrow here, you find that because of the constriction, it starts thinning. And you find this, it becomes thin, you become not thin so much, and then again, you know, it will start becoming better. Okay, so that's a fibrosis that you happen. So you really need to take off the, all the fibrosis and uh, uh, take off the nerves, they take off the, uh, all the fibrous segment, and the muscle will breathe easy. So then, this is a case where we have done this. So we are done now. So when you see that, you will find that we decompress it from the carpal tunnel, and then you go to the, the little bit on the ulnar side, and then go incision straight. So somebody may ask, you know, when you are decompressing, this is a secondary process, not uh, decompressing at the immediate acute compartment. Acute compartment, you, know, you go in a different way, where you don't expose the medium. Now. Whereas in a secondary, when you are doing, don't do the zigzags and all this because you might injure the skin. That's one. And you need to have good access. So this is the best is a straight line, straight incision. That's one. Secondly, I'll come up later. Suppose you are going to do a free functioning tra transfer or something. If you have you know, too many crisscross incisions, that may access will become difficult. So here is a patient where whom we are done yeah, neur neurolysis only and excision of the fibrous tissues. But then fortunately, his uh, flexors were fine. So it is done very well. His intrinsics also have got re recovered. So here you see a VAC, see there's a tight bandage, the effect of the blister that is seen here. It's a VAC in a, in a 12 year old boy. And you've got a, see if you see his hand, it has got a totally an intrinsic minus hand has got. So the other side has got a, a intrinsic minus hand. And if you ask him to flex, he's flexing. It's not that he's not flexing. So he's doing this, he'll be doing like this. So now what you really need is you need to get the intrinsics back and you need to get the flexors back. So here again, we are decompressed the whole thing. We are decompressed, we excised it. See, now you see as a long-term result, you find, see, he's able to flex. He's able to uh, he'll take the extent. And he's also able to see, he's able to keep the hand in as this position. That means the intrinsics are fully recovered. You get very good results in children. You find that the, even children who get the intrinsic minus hand, you decompress nicely. Many a time, you know, you find the intrinsics in the hand, they develop. You just have to be sure that the wound that you are creating in the forearm, you know, it heals, uh, it heals primarily. If you have any doubts, I think if you do it, if you've got any doubts, you know, go in for a flap cover. I think that's that's not my much safer. See here, that's very important to go for a flap cover because here we, uh, actually this hand belongs to that of an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, we can uh, never know that, uh, you can never think, you know, that uh, being in a good place, uh, you will not get a old medical because when he had this injury, 
you have seen where many of the orthopedic uh, surgeons in his own department, a plastic surgeon, all of them saw. But still, you know, he developed a work ministry me contracture. You see that we are uh, exercising all the this. And then we are not pretty sure that the skin was nice. I think the skin was not nice. So it was all scarred. So what we did was, you know, we did a flap cover at this time. This flap is very important. I personally feel now he is a professor. So, uh, Professor of Orthopedics and he's all doing all the um, um, orthopedic um, work he's uh, doing. But personally, I would say that it healed because, because we put a well vascularized tissue to, uh, to cover the hand. So, now when he's able to flex, he's able to do all his activities, he's able to do, do very well. Now, when you think, you know, uh, there are two ways, you know, the work ministry can touch again. Sometimes, you know, it can happen because of the problems here or it can happen above. So here is a patient, you know, say he is a patient who has got an um, injury like this. See how hard he uh, tries to pick up a pen. See, that's because the intrinsics in the hand are not working. So that's the one. Because the intrinsics are working because the nerves have been uh, very, very tight over here. It's not uh, working. So here it's a result of some problem that is happening in the, there's problem that is happening in the, uh, um, the forum. So it's the same patient. We go, see, so open up. We are uh, doing a neuralysis of the median ulnar nerves. We are exercising the infected um, um, muscles. We are, so now, you know, the median nerve you know, is laid uh, bare. And the same patient, I think now you'll find, you know, see, is able to do this. You will find that there is a little amount of you know, muscle loss you have found you, may, you might have had. But then you will find you know, he is able, able to do this. So uh, they, it's quite possible you now they get. And you see, he is able to do But if you really see his watch his hand, you will find sometimes you know, they have a difficulty in the FPL part of it. I think there's a, there's a small part of it you now we might have exercised, that part of it you now we would have. See, he's able to press, he's able to um, uh, do, and he's able to, the intrinsics have developed, um, uh, have recovered, recovered very well. So the, 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 that's, the, that's the next thing that we know. Now we'll concentrate on the surgery to get the f finger movements. The type of surgery done is dependent upon the extent of the muscle involvement and the quality of skin on the forearm. I repeatedly emphasize on the quality on the skin on the forearm because this is one thing you know, which has been very much neglected over. Now you will find, now we will go to this figure, is very important. So uh, usually when I see this, see a um, uh, hand, I just visualize you know, in my mind as a cross section as to what has gone through. So the initially you will find the FDP, see the FDP is what will go off, goes off. Then the, here, then if you see the XA, FPL, and after that, then you find the rest of it will go, go like this. And the most severe, you know, extensors are, extensors are also will also will be involved. So here you find we go from stage by stage with examples of every one of them. So here you find uh, only the two things are involved. Here what you really require, you need to open up over here and then just lengthen up the two tendons. I think they'll be all right. If it is very mild, you can just need to do a fractional lengthening of the tendon where you, you just make incise the, the tendinous part as the myotendinous fibers, you know, that area that you excise them, incise them, the, them, then they become all right. Same chap, you know, you is able to do this there. But how do you recognize this is that when you flex the MCP joint, you can be able to, uh, IP joints you can extend. Whereas, you know, if you extend the um, MCP joint, then the IP joints get flexed. That means, you know, is the tendon, flexor tendon length is shorter. So this is just a contract. This is a contract that has happened on the middle finger alone. Um, it, has, it has happened. So we had to open it up and then uh, the lengthening of the tendons is just enough to achieve this. Several. You only need to go through this. They are usually... They are, the nerves are okay. Usually the nerves are okay. So they get you no know, ex uh, excellent results they, they achieve. Now we go to the next uh, severe type. You find the flexors are acting. My audio. But then, you know, they are shorter. The muscle is you know, shorter. So all of us, you know, from the days when we did the exams, we all talked, you know, the muscle slide operation, max page operation. But if you ask me, you know, this is one of the operations we have done very little. Is one of the most difficult operations to do, which get to, to get nice results, because the amount of dissection that you have to do to make them slide is very high. I think this is a very this is a technically demanding operation. I would say this is a very technically demanding operation. But then when you do it also, you should see to that that you don't disturb the nerve supply of these muscles or the blood supply of this muscle. So that's that much you know you need to dissect and uh, go. Only then no, it's fine. But then, well done, in a selected cases, I think you can get a good result. Same patient you now has got this, we had a max page operation, so where you know you get a, um, the, the result is good. 
So if the FDP is working, if the, sorry, the FDS is working, but the FDP is scarred, I think that the next level, no, you get this a find as to, because the FDP will be sometimes you know, will be spared because the, depending upon the insult, the, it is the FDP which gets lost first, and the FPL which gets lost, and then the FDS. So sometimes you find at a stage where FDS is working, but the FDP is scarred, so that also you can find out. Now you'll find, you take up individually, you'll find out the pressure, uh, how much they flex, they'll be flexing well, but then the, the DAP joint will be very tight. And he has also got a loss of the nerves because that's the reason why he has got a intrinsic uh, minus uh, hand. You open up, you find nerves, uh, that's the median nerve, you see the vessels that is the median nerve. See, here it's all right. So if this type of combination has to occur, it's not a very severe request. It's only a problem, it must have happened in the local area. Local area, tremendous, some problem must have happened, so that's the reason. You see, when I say FDS is all right, you see the color of this muscle? And you see the color of this muscle? I think it's grossly different. This is dead, this is alive. And you see the nerve that is going beneath this fibrous tissue. So here, that's the area, you know, the nerves. It is this segment, you know, where the nerves are gone. This ulnar nerve and median nerve is gone. So you, you excise it and you find, so we are now finding this. So here again, you are finding, you see, this is good, this is bad. And the nerves that are coming, you see a yellow-like tissue that you find. That means there's a, there's a tissue now which is dead muscles. And the nerve is passing through that. We excise it over. And then what we do, because we've got a very good FDS, but in a very tight uh, FDP, you need to divide it. Otherwise, no, you won't work. And this can't work anyway. This is fibrous. So this is the FDS that has been uh, there. And then this is the FDP. So this one, you, know, you need to cut it as distal as possible, and this you need to cut it now proximally at the place where you, this index FD, FDP is separate, and this other one. And you adjusting the right tension, yeah, I think you do the um, FDS to the FDP. So that's the proximal cut end of the FDP that's there. And uh, you try to, we are trying to put the permanent longest into the FPL. And you see in the same patient, no? so this patient had been uh, decompressed elsewhere before, so he came over here. So you now you see he's able to uh, fully extend, fully flex, and the same patient you find out and you know, see how much he's able to do it. So this is the uh, use of the FDS. This is you know, flexing, the, uh, flexing the FDP. I think that's the next level where you are able to uh, do, a good, do a good result. So now going further, now you find there is no muscles at all. So both FDS is gone, then FDP is gone. Then what do you do? Okay. Then there are only two options. You, know, you need to uh, get the motor from somewhere. So you can get it. So either you can get it by a tendon transfer or you can get it by a free functioning muscle transfer with microsurgery. So we'll find out you now as to how we do that. So how we do that is you know, if you have to do a tendon transfer, the ideal is the ECRB to FDP. You need to check up on whether which is good. I think if the ECRL is good, sometimes that may be much better than the ECRB in a workman's. If that is good, you choose that. And before you're doing that, you need to cut the FDP of the other tendons. And you need to do a two switches like this. You have to put two horizontal mattress switches so that when you pull them, they all couple come together. You need to keep it in such a tension that you do this because you are not going to give four tendons, you know, you are going to give only one motor and then that one motor you have to do this and then you have to slide off like this. So that means, you know, you are giving a very powerful insertion, you put a very strong insertion so that you now you can get on to mobilizing them much early. I think that's the way to do it. The key thing is doing this cascade. I think these two switches and keeping it in the right tension, I think that's the trick. The money is for that, you know, that, that's the trick. And then after that, now you do the, do the tension. So here is, you know, that's what now we have done for a patient. Now what you have done is, see, he's got no muscles, you know. He's got no muscles. So what we have done is, uh, see, how hard they find to do this. See, he's, he's, he's finding it to do this. He's got no muscles. Okay. <clears throat> now what we do is, see, so, now it's a six months old ischemic entrature. So it involves FDS. You exercise the scars in your eyes, alna nerve, no idea of reconstruction, three cables, I think we'll see what you do, okay? So here we have opened him, that right now the same patient, we have opened him up and we found that in the whole of this area, that the median nerve is totally scarred. I think it's totally scarred. So that means, you know, you can't. So you should, somebody should ask me, when will I do a nerve grafting? When do you think neuralize is enough? When I do a nerve grafting? 
if when you're looking under the microscope you are not able to see fascicles that means you need to exercise the nerve as in just keeping that small bridge of fibrous tissue won't help under the microscope or under a loop magnification you see you don't see fascicles so all of us have seen median nerve as if you see it now you can see the fascicles if you don't see the fascicles are so much dissect you don't see anything at all then so you find that your nerve is good here nerve is good there so that means you no know, you need to do that and we put in a nerve graft so we put that and then we close so that's happening and then we are decided that we will go going to do something to the with the extensor ten we had seen him that means he has got good extensors he has got no flexors he has got no flexors and if we ask him to flex it so if we ask him to flex the hand so that he can do you know, something it does you know, that he can this is due to the contracture so he is going to do the additions of the stent is doing the extension of the wrist and doing this and then he is not able to do anything but then you can see he's got a good wrist extensor so that's a positive thing that we have so we are going to use that to do this so here the same patient you now where we have done this and now when we do the, this is what uh, you are doing the ecrl to the fdp and that will get that will give us you know that will give us the flexion but then what should you have to do for the eap you know that means you know you need to get up and the thumb that is in the indices transfer you do so now we have done the same thing the same chap we are now taking it taking it up so we are fixing it up and then you see we are bringing the extensor indices for the opponents plus t we are giving and we are so we are doing this we are did the ecrl to the the ecrb to the the finger flexors see now he has got this so this is quite possible now to do this so we this is possible he has got a good opponents he is able to flex well but if you see his hand you find there's totally no muscles i think absolutely no muscles here so when you have no muscles there are only two things you need to borrow you need to get the motors from somewhere so you need to, you need to get that so that's it so now the last come the thing comes is the free functioning muscle transfer in vic so this is one of the papers now which we published where uh, we are used this free functioning gracilis so if you don't have in, in a more severe volkmans where the extensors are also not all right that means what you do i think the only source only way out is this that's the gracilis muscles that has been taken that's the neurovascular bundle and that's the obturator nerve you know the branch obturator nerve is supplies this got a good nerve and distally you find a tendon distally you find the tendon this is the proximal we always need to take a skin island to monitor the muscle so now how do we use this now see now here here is the patient who has got a, after neurolysis the sensation is recovered and some intrinsic muscles are also recovered you see that the thumb is moving but you see we are asking him to flex we are asking him to flex the fingers but then there is no flexion there is no ip joint movement you no know? so it's just that intrinsic some re intrinsic are recovered previously did not have anything at all so that part of it is this so now we need to get the uh, flexion so here you find now we ask him to flex nothing happening okay so nothing nothing is happening in flexion so now we are going to do a free functioning muscle transfer so now you see a uh, the gracilis muscle as we take it with the operator now it's taken so now it's brought to the uh, hand we opened up and you see the fibrous tissue so you need to take the the tendons over there and we attach the proximally we attach it to the humerus so the muscle part of it you attach to the, the humerus you attach with the pds and you see this reason i told now we don't make a zigzag incisions because this allows us to exposure the easy exposure and then now we attach the tendons over here at the same chap you know see uh, how he comes up see he's do this so he had a, such a severe uh, keloid he asked us to excise the keloid because he got a tendency we put a small z in spite of it it has become bad see but then you find on you know, the if you find the results of this uh, free function muscle the gracilis acts well so what we do we attach the artery to the end to side to the brachial artery and we can either attach it to the anterior interosseous nerve which is a pure motor or we can take a, one chunk of the median nerve one fascicle of the median nerve we can take and attach it as used as a motor so that's possible so is the same boy you know see is that you see the left hand is uh, taking a see is holding a full bottle is a bull bottle of water and it is strong i think it can be made strong and it's also because his intrinsic self develop see he's got a very nice result intrinsic because intrinsic self got develop he is able to uh, use it and he can use it for you know small activities pinching and all that you now he can he can use it so this is one of the good good advances that he make so ffmt gives good results in a patient where his intrinsic self also work otherwise what will happen is he'll be doing like this so that means you need to do something 
further. So here is a patient who is in a VIC. Uh, he has come to us. His entrance is also not working. So you open up. You find see the median now. It goes and then this is a fibrous tissue. This is a classic. Okay, that that part of it is excised. And now you find that the, the nerves and all is there. We have released it. But then you still find, you know, the intrinsic didn't develop this. Over a period of time, you, know, you find this guy is developed. So muscles are also not working. Intrinsic is also not working. So now to get this to work, you have done a free functioning graceless. We are done. So that's what is done. So now you find, see, he is able to find if a free functional muscle is acting. But then unless you know, this comes like this, you can't do this. You see, you see it's working. So he's got a long flexors are there, but then the intrinsics are not there. So that means you, know, you need to do the next job, the thing. So here we are doing a tendon transfer. You're taking the uh, an extensor, you are uh, wrist extensor, you are taking, and then you know this is used as uh, for the indices for opponents. We are going to use it with a four tail, you no? Know? And we are going to divide it into four tails and doing a claw correction. So once we do the claw correction, I think that's the result. So once we do this, then you find, you know, he's able to use your hand. So you need to have both intrinsic and extrinsic in the hand you need to have. That means, you know, you get a, you get a very, very good results you get. So here's a, here's a patient, you know, you find another patient, you find, we do this, same thing we do. You, know? you find there's a big loss of nerve. So that means, you know, you need to reconstruct the nerve to get uh, get sensation. And once you get the sensation, but then no flexors, you know, so you need to do a, a free function muscle transfer, you, you do. And then you can, you can do get this. See, this now is only a few months right now. See, now what is this she has got is that now she is able to touch it. So this will improve over time. And after that, what we need to do, you need to do this. So finally, before closing, you know, see, I always say, you know, we should uh, never give up. So uh, this has got a nice story. I think this is one of my early cases. You know, when just we also started practice at that time, we are just salvaging limbs. This happened to uh, an orthopedic surgeon referred to us this patient. Uh, it was happened on a Thursday evening because on Friday, Saturday, Sunday he was going for a conference. So uh, they had put in a plaster and gone, and he has told to another doctor to see, but then somehow they missed. On Friday evening, you know, she complained of severe pain. The young girl, she complained of very severe pain. But then nowhere to go, so and Saturday, Sunday they missed, and then Sunday evening, you know, all the pain stopped. She had a very severe pain, given analgesics, and they stopped. That means it's gone. So on Monday evening, when they opened up, you know, this was the way this is found, you know. So uh, so whole thing erupted over there, a lot of problems in the so in the local area. So he only said, sir, uh, somehow don't amputate. Okay, I just can't be there. We just don't amputate. Okay, really, we also didn't want to amputate. But then there's a sort of foul smelling foul. Foul smelling, we took it up and then uh, we excised all this. That's a nerve, you know. So it's covered. And a couple of deep treatments later, you really required a flap. So unfortunately, what happened? It has become so bad. So we gave a flap. And suddenly, some, one day, something was coming out. So the whole radius came off. The whole radius came off. And after that, no, half of ulna also came off. So now we have got, no, you see, this is also a flap. And she required a flap cover on both sides, you know. So we had given a uh, uh, debrided well and then given this side flap and that side flap and the whole uh, uh, um, uh, bones also came off. And now we had a healed hand. So you had a flap here on this side and the flap on the other side. And if you see the x-ray, you find there's no bones. Again, no tendons, no bones, no nerves, you know. So it, it was there. So then we had to, we thought we should use some bone. But now, having started, now you can't, you know, um, uh, give up. So we did a free fibula. I think he had a tough time in fixing this free fibula. So he had to fix this free fibula. So now we got, um, uh, we, we got a stability. We got this in this hand. And then she was using this with some sort of an addition fixatives and all. We gave her with appliance we started doing. But then uh, the elbow was good. Even then, the parents said it is very good because the alternative suggested was the by amputation. So now this elbow is nice. And so we wanted to make this now active. So then we started a facial letter steps and take it on to the biceps. You know, divided the biceps, half of it, and then started to the fingers. And we gave it to the nerves also. Next one, now we did a sural nerve grafts. We made the hand uh, sense it. So with this, she was having a reasonable amount of you know, holding things. She, she could really hold. To, to that level, she happened. And then the next to the story came. So she, she was a very, very studious uh, student. And she when she finished plus two, 
uh, she wrote the entrance exam to become a doctor by the time she said i have to become a doctor and she got very good marks but then when they went to the physical you know the upper limb deformities you know they are not uh, considered but then she said she'll go to the court and saying this happened due to hydrogenic injury so i think i am very much willing to serve and then such sort of things in the court also says and we also gave her and then she joined i think she joined st john's medical college i think she joined st john's medical college and then the last month you know she graduated so always you know so you wanted to become a doctor and became a doctor and then that's her you know she uh, you just can't believe it she has become a doctor and then you know she is using her hand her idea is that you know that there are a lot of things other than surgery where with this hand on a person she doesn't mind using the photograph she says no you do it so she has done and uh, extremely well so uh, it only gives me a thought as to one of the things in our uh, um uh, book this which is a book called the reconstruction of warriors this is written by a, 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 a plastic surgeon in england so this was written is a plastic surgeon he was involved in uh, treating all the fellows in the world war 2 who were jumping out of the um, um, uh, he was a flying uh, burning cockpits so when the battle of britain when they were shooting the airplane they all ejected out but then they did not have a you know, perfect cover for their faces so everything else was already in the faces were burnt so he has got a guinea pig club you know so he did he was using this so he was this book called reconstruction of warriors and that in that in book he will say is not that the question we do it right to give a give them back a real face he said the real and lasting satisfaction is derived from what the patient does with what the surgeon achieves rather than the purely technical aspect of the repair i think if you talk to this girl and you know, we are not given her a normal hand but then with what we gave i think what she achieved i think if you take that it's really fantastic i think that's what no uh, really uh, makes it the worth and the, the title of the chapter itself is called the privilege of uh, living so uh, i think we never give up in a work ministry country right i pick was a personally feel every patient can be improved i think every patient with work ministry country right can be improved but it takes a time you know between the first slide and the last slide in every series you know there will be a gap of in about a year or so so it's a, it's a spectrum you need to analyze you do need to find out the damage in all the components individually take it no no muscle skin blood vessels bone you take it and it's important as is the damage in each component and you think as how best can i do this how best can i do this and the most important thing is that the sequencing of reconstruction the timing is important i am sure no most patients can be improved so thank you mr uh, th- thank you very much uh, dr bala and uh, dan shaker for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, i'll be very happy to answer any of the questions you know that may uh, come out of this so thank you mm-hmm.